Kind of like Alka Seltzer. Once it dissolves, it's yes. good to go down. Yep. Introducing the sodium methoxide, which will ultimately do the reaction. Now, a little cover to keep the fumes in there. Now the reaction will start taking place. It'll go from this lighter brown color to a darker color when you know it's working. All right. So it's just pretty much all set now. There's not much. No, nope, we let it mix for about 15 minutes. Okay, I've taken the stirrer out. Now it's time to let it set and see if it's going to separate. All right. We'll come back in a few minutes and we should end up with a nice clean separation down here of glycerin on the bottom and finished fuel on top. Very good. All right. So that's the that's the money right there. Yep. Now the next step in that, in the big batch that we do, we'll wash it and dry it I after see. we get to this. And that'll take that kind of a cloudy, misty yes. sun, but the glycerin is right there on the bottom. Yes. And then the other stuff. Yep. Uh, all right, we got it raised up a little bit so you can see. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Very yeah, good. good. All right, so you keep track of it on here, Dave, and that way you'll be able to make your calculations and in, in, increase the values based on the volume that you've got. We know there's 568 liters and 150 gallons of vegetable oil. We multiply that times the 7.8. That's 4,430 grams times 0.002205 gives us 9.76 pounds of lye that we'll need to do the reaction. Okay, and then the volume again is proportionate to the to the volume the methanol of methanol will be so 30 gallons of methanol. That's straight 20 up. 20 percent of the 150. I see. And then the, the lye, and you're good to go. Yep. We'll mix the nine, good. a little over nine pounds of lye in with the 30 gallons of methanol. All right. And so the the real reason for doing this is to get a sort of a small sample, test the theory, correct. Make sure it all works, and once we know it works, then we can run the numbers up and do the big batch. Correct. All right. And that's 150 gallons net at the end, right? Uh, no, you, you lose a little bit in the process, generally between 130 to 135 is, would be the net. Net volume of oil. Yes. Great. All right, now this is the uh, reactors here. And you can see by this gauge here, the net vicinity is the 568 liters, which is 150 gallons. I have it up to temperature okay. to do the reaction. Uh, between 140 and 148 is a, a good temperature. Good, 147. And then these are your liter readings on the uh, gallons. 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 Gallon I see. Okay. This this would be 150 gallons in that vicinity. I see. All right, and I got to walk out in a minute, and we'll I'll look at the heaters because they're pretty impressive yeah. as well. And uh, we're not bothered going through all where the pipes are and stuff. Right. Suffice it to say, it's fully automated. I mean, to the extent that you have to open valves, but right. you don't have to uh, physically move oil around or anything. No. It's all done by pumps, and it's metered and everything. Yeah. And this is the, 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 we'll call this the reactor, correct? That's correct. And then after it's reacted, and as we saw inside, and it's done the preliminary separation, then the bad oil later on will come out, the, the, the glycerin comes out the bottom. Correct. And then the good oil comes up and it goes into what's the wash tank. Wash tank, wash and dry tank. All right, and I'm going to get up there in a minute with the step ladder and give the folks a view down inside of it. We'll, we'll talk about some of those components as well. All right, we're looking down inside of the tank. And that's your uh, uh, coil down there, your heat exchanger coil. That's correct. 
and then this is the sprinkler nozzles two of them and they're what washes so the water sprinkles up and it washes down through the uh, reacted uh, the methesters and rinses away any impurities uh, and uh, cleans it up correct Dave the impurities uh, which is basically salt particles uh, this process is also known as transesterification okay which is a process used to make soap so you end up with some soap particles uh, floating floating freely in the methyl esters and also there's some free methanol that oh. we want to get out of there okay and the, the water bath does both of those jobs oh, I see and we'll wash it several times and monitor it and when we see that it's finally clear and dry of water uh, it's a finished product and then same thing the water lays in the bottom and you're just going to drain that off yes. yes very good now these are the uh, military style heaters and what they do is they are circulating hot water through the tanks to drive up the temperature and Dave they're set at what temperature this one's set at about 190 degrees and that's where I run the finished methyl esters to dry it once the washing operation is done I see the other one's at about a hundred and it's set at about 160 degrees but I I primarily use it to get the, the initial 150 <coughs> gallons of waste vegetable oil up to the about 145 degrees all right for the process and it's important to know that that temperature can't get higher than 145 or 147 or so because past what temperature then the methanol would flash off 148.8 I see okay then if you added methanol it would be wasted because the methanol would simply dehydrate it would steam off steam off I should say flash yeah, off yes yeah. flash off and, and go to the atmosphere uh -huh. and, it, and it could be dangerous at that point okay so it's not even stable at that Correct. point then Correct. yeah good all right I, I generally shoot anywhere between 140 and 145 to do the reaction which is plenty okay yeah good